Hi, welcome to this first presentation in a series of getting started in InfraWorks. And one of the first things I want to do is actually set up a coordinate uh, system for my limits for my actual file I'm going to actually create and bring in. So you can see in here I actually have my maximum and minimum coordinates. And uh, the file type that's been saved out is a SQLite. What's very important to do is actually make sure that you actually specify the correct coordinate system. Um, in this case, it's the British National Grid that's actually being used. Again, you can check that in the advanced settings. Uh, because we've defined the actual model limits, you can see it's come in um, as a rectangular area in here. Uh, with various options, we can actually change on this, um, whether we're reporting in meters, whether the area is actually in hectares. Um, and again, that, those can actually be set uh, at the project startup. But let's have a bit of data in here, and um, we're going to bring in some um, LiDAR data for this actual area. Um, and I'm going to simply attach in a file that I actually have and just browse off to the directory. So this will give you an idea for getting started um, uh, as a workflow uh, from first principles. Um, again, there's plenty of data sets that's actually available online. This is one particular data set I'm using. Um, so it may, it may take a while to actually bring the data in. It dep depends on the size of data that you're actually um, using in here. Again, you might have to get up to 30 seconds or so to actually uh, for it to be populated on the screen. When it comes in, don't worry if you can't actually see it. You can see you need to double click and actually uh, define it to the British uh, National Grid or the particular coordinate system that you're actually going to use. Again, give it a, a bit of time to populate and you'll see the terrain and the true relief of the area you're looking at populate like so. Okay, so we've got um, um, a bit of a lake area in here and we have some raster imagery that um, we want to actually populate in the background. So I'm going to bring in some raster image for this particular area. You can see in here, um, I have a GeoTIFF. Again, once it comes in, I want to make sure that it's going to use the correct coordinate system. We want to have that defined. And at all stages, this is actually saving back to the uh, SQLite data store. Um, again, the aerial photography or orth photography will be populated, and we can zoom in the particular regions and areas that are shown on the screen. So again, we can see the actual relief of the uh, areas in question. So we've got a lot of data we actually want to populate in here. Um, and I'm going to bring in some um, SDF data, which is native to um, Autodesk. And we're going to bring this in for some of the buildings and some of the water areas and some of the pipe network that's in here. Again, as before, um, we want to classify the coordinate system, but we also want to specify um, the actual style or type being used. In this case, I'm actually going to put a theme on. I'm going to look at the property data, which is the stories of the actual building. And I'm going to multiply it by a variable, say 3.1 meters. So it'll look in the actual data table and it'll give the height of the building um, um, 3.1 meters times the actual story height. So it'll actually give me um, the buildings. Again, you don't see this information because we have to make sure that we actually um, set up the coordinate system, but also tell the buildings that they actually need to drape on the actual physical terrain. So again, once we hit the drape command, we can hit OK and we'll see this information actually populate on the screen. Okay, so we can see the different height of some of the buildings in there, um, particularly at the business area at the back. Um, you can see that it's uh, multiplied the story height out by 3.1. Again, depends on data sources, that different data sources you may be using, maybe from Ordnance Survey Ireland, Ordnance Survey Northern Ireland, Ordnance Survey GB, maybe some uh, online data or even survey data. So let's have a look at the water boundaries. Again, we're going to classify the type in here, make sure it's water, that'll bring in the appropriate theme. And we're actually going to convert out the closed polygons in here and we're going to drape. So we'll see this uh, river area coming along here and we get a nice visual effect actually coming in. Uh, again, you can see that as part of the shimmering water uh, on the screen. Okay, so let's um, actually uh, clear or specify in here uh, for the pipe network. So let's specify it as pipeline. This particular data is 3D, so it will be on the terrain um, for this uh, particular model. Um, so if I, I take a look underneath the terrain, you'll get to see that in there, like so. Okay. 
we get to see a wee bit of bleed in some of the data wasn't on the terrain um, again that, that can be tidied up but it is associated to the uh, pipeline style physically in there okay we've got some road center line data that I want to bring in and again road center line data can typically be purchased and um, this is a SQL light one um, from uh, OSGB but it can be purchased from Ordnance Survey in Northern Ireland or OSI depending um, on what region you're actually in again the road center line data, what we're actually going to do is make sure the type is specified to road. We're going to make sure that the actual coordinate system is physically on. And it will populate a generic road against based on the center line data. So this gives a very partial visual effect of the actual model that you're actually creating in the background. This is quite an extensive area we're actually having to look at. Um, and you can see all the all the routes and the junctions have actually been populated. You can even see if I go to a typical roundabout area, I'm getting some island population in there. So it's a very, very good visual representation for your client. Okay, so we can actually theme this um, a little bit further. And what I'm going to do here is add in what's called a style rule. So I'm going to set up a set of rules for the various buildings in the area. So I'm going to classify it as a name, but I'm going to look at the individual property data um, within the actual model. And one of the uh, parameters I'm going to look at is roof height. So you can see in here I can actually populate um, the list of uh, roof heights in there. So I'm going to say when the roof height equals 3.1, pick up a particular type of facade. And again, you can customize these facade or this information in here if you don't want to use any of these library components. So for a particular type of roof of 3.1, I've added in a particular type of facade. I'm going to populate another style as well, and I'm going to keep doing this until I've went through my various stories. So you can see in there for roof heights of 3.1, a particular I've taken up a particular type of facade and valid it in. So I'm going to carry on for my various type of um, single families, multi-families in here. I'm going to carry on through um, apartments and I'm going to add the style in. So the process is that you add the style, um, you add your conditions in here. Um, if any of you know um, AutoCAD's um, map or Civil 3D, you'll see it's a very, very similar um, interface. It's just a bit of a statement that you're actually using. So it is quite intuitive to use in there. It will let you know when you're going actually wrong. So again, I'm just going to, for this multifamily, I'm going to pick up the particular type of facade that I actually want to use. And again, I'm just going to carry on through this and populate it as part of the model. Okay, I'm getting down to my last couple of ones in here. And again, you can add in um, an actual range as well. Um, so this really does depend on the um, data. Um, this data is particularly data rich. Um, if you had just generic data, say it was shape files and it didn't have any building heights, you'd have to assume um, arbitrary height information in here. You can see in this condition, I'm actually picking 12.4 meters or I'm actually picking, uh, you know, you can pick it between a range. You can also apply various uh, conditions for roof slope information in there. So we'll simply add that in. Last couple of business areas to, uh, to pick up on. Um, this is constantly being saved in the background. Again, it's, um, I'm populating all the data, as I uh, said previously, as a SQLite file. Um, a lot of users find this quite confusing in InfraWorks trying to get started, but it is very, very straightforward. And again, you can actually um, populate and share this information um, as well through uh, InfraWorks 360. So last area has been added in. We're going to pick a um, building height in here of 31. And we're going to add in our last style. And then we'll have a quick look at um, the status of our model. Okay, this particular building height in here is going to be applied to our business park that is across the river um, and say we're going to use this as an actual theme uh, for this uh, various level of presentations that we're going to do some road design providing that business park at the back as you can see 
um, we're going to be looking at various bridge options across here. Um, it could particularly be a sensitive area, so you can see there's a building there in the background that's a government based building and uh, again it could be a list of buildings that we could have a concern about and we want to actually highlight in our visual um, presentation. So what we're going to do here is just simply drag and drop a style physically onto it which we can very very easily do as a part of the model. So all we need to do is just actually grab the style that we want and simply drag it onto the model. Um, thanks for listening to this video. Please watch out for the uh, any future videos in here where we'll carry on by using the road design and um, actually creating some bridge options across here. Thanks again.